Hey there friend, and welcome back. And today I have a very special topic I want to talk about, and that is my horse Braveheart, who passed away a couple years ago. And I kind of want to talk about how he's how he interacts with me from the other side because he's very talkative on the other side. <laughs> Since his name is Braveheart, and I made his his registered name, which is like the fancy show name that you give horses when you go and you show, I gave him the registered name My Heart's Obsession because he is still is my heart's obsession. Um, it, clearly, we have the theme of hearts. So when he passed, I saw many, many, many hearts appear, and I still do see a lot of hearts, and when I see them, I, I comment, and I'm like, oh, hi, Brave, how are you? Um, but I'm gonna give a little backstory on Braveheart. He was a wish on a shooting star, and I still remember the first day that I ever met him. I worked at a barn that had, like, 75 horses there, and I was on staff, and uh, my mom was dropping me off for, for my shift, and I walked into the barn and we, we walked and we looked on the left hand side and there was a horse sitting there. It was a big paint horse and it had a for sale sign on the door. And he was cute. He stuck his nose through the bars and we were petting him and my mom looked at me and she was like, do you ever think you'd like a horse like this? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and I remember there were a couple of other people that rode him. There was this one girl in particular who really liked him um, and she rode him every now and again. and. I remember just really falling for this horse. Like I was really, really young. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade when I first really started riding him. I was, I, it was seventh grade um, when I met him and started riding him. And I just really, I really loved this horse and I had a connection with him. And I remember talking to my boss about it and making so many wishes on shooting stars and everything else under the sun because I just, I really wanted this horse. And then somehow, I don't quite remember. He just, he became mine. It was assumed that he was mine and he was mine. And he was one of the greatest teachers I've ever had in my entire life. And I owe that horse so much because he was so patient and so kind. And he put up with all my bullshit with learning and just, he was just such a good boy. And he became somewhat of a legend to a lot of people. A lot of people rode him, a lot of people loved him. He was a horse for a woman who lost her horse. Um, he was the first horse that she rode when she started to get back into it again. And he just, he created a lot of good energy and special moments for a lot of people. A great teacher, not just to me, but when other people were riding him as well. And he just, he did everything I asked. He tried. He tried so hard. His confirmation was was a little wonky. He was put together. His legs were pigeon toed, so they they curled in and everything. And he just he was just a good boy. One of the one thing that I really wanted to do with him was barrel racing, and he wasn't fast. His turns were okay. He tried. He really did, and he tried up until the very end of his life. Um, he had gotten sick quite some time before he passed. He Something was up with his liver. He had colic really bad. He wasn't passing any any manure. He wasn't drinking. He wasn't eating. And it was, I wasn't sure if I was going to lose him. So I, we took him to the horse hospital. He had his eye removed because he had a bacterial infection in there and it was actually shrinking. Um, and it's cool because I had a one-eyed horse. It was really awesome. So he managed to make it through this the, the first round of being sick and we just kept getting better we kept trying to do the barrel racing thing I remember a farrier told me that he would never be good at barrel racing and he would just be a glorified trail horse and we proved him wrong very wrong because me and Brave qualified for the world championship barrel race in Perry Georgia he had one eye his confirmation still is awful. <laughs> and he was 22. 22 years old when we qualified. 
So he wasn't young, but he was in he was in incredible shape. He was muscular. He was just he was awesome. You could take him out, do anything with him, take him on the trails, jump him, enter him in, you know, Western pleasure, English pleasure. I remember going into the arena and the look on some of the people's faces when I would show him would just be so like they they would be so solemn because we were coming in there and they knew that we were going to clean up and do really well. And we did 4-H fairs. We did really well. Oh, gosh. He was such a good boy. A, a close friend of mine actually used to steal the reins off of Braveheart's face so I had nothing to hold on to. And me and Brave would just go running through the arena and he wouldn't do anything. He was so good. He took such great care of me. And... At the very end, he he was going through liver failure, and I pretty much spent my entire life savings trying to save this horse. And I got nine more days with him, and then ultimately, like, he just wasn't comfortable. He loved Twizzlers, and the big sign for me when it was time for me to make the decision was I, I offered him a Twizzler, and he just, he turned it down. He literally turned around, walked into the corner, and stuck his head in the corner, and that's just when I knew I just I couldn't no amount of money could have made that horse comfortable so I had to make the decision and he just oh god it broke my heart it really did it was the hardest thing I ever had to do but I know for a fact that he's still with me it's because of that horse that I have the lifestyle that I have right now from a very young age I got him when I was in seventh and eighth grade I've had to work really hard to keep him because we didn't have the money to afford a horse. So I was 13, 14 years old, working at a barn, worked at this barn all the way up through college. And because of that, I developed a very strong work ethic. And that carries me through to this day. Like this is probably video number four that I'm going to be recording out of like 10 today. But, you know, I met a lot of incredible people through horses, my best friends that uh, that I have, met them through horses, but it's because of him and my love of him, I've been able to create an awesome and incredible life just around horses and around what he left for me, the gift, the gifts that he's left for me. I actually have him tattooed. I'll throw a picture of that right up there. I have his, his good eye is facing this way, which obviously you can't see, but his eye is facing the other way. And I don't know if there's anybody else in the world that has a one-eyed horse tattoo, um, but I love it and I think it's absolutely unique. So today's episode is just to kind of talk a little bit about how he's spoken to me beyond the grave, so to speak. When he died about a week later, I think I still have a picture of it, I went to Hobby Lobby and I, my saying with him was be brave, be brave, brave heart strong, all that stuff. I went into Hobby Lobby and on one of the display racks was an entire floor to ceiling, an entire thing of be brave merch. And I was losing it in the middle of Hobby Lobby and I think I spent like 60 some odd dollars on be brave merch just because I had to I had to have it because he left it there for me. Why would I not, you know? <laughs> I think I have the picture. I have to see if I can find it. Um, he does stuff like that all the time. His On his death day anniversary, uh, on the, the one year anniversary, I had a bunch of friends at the barn and we, we drank wine to celebrate like his, just him. We put Twizzlers on his rock. And while this was happening, it was a clear, clear night. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere in the background, in the distant in the field, there was a thunderstorm that came rolling through and there were big things of lightning coming down. And it was just, it was so cool. It was really awesome. I swear, not a day goes by where I don't miss him in some capacity because he was just, he was awesome. And we just had that, we had that connection. But I had something happen a couple of days ago that just made me want to make this video. Um, his birthday was April 1st and he would have been 25 this year so he would have been a quarter of a century old and when I moved 
Abigail, I brought a little jar with me because he's buried out back in one of the fields and I was just gonna take a little bit of dirt with me so I can have it with me as a way to kind of remember where he's buried even though I have other I have other parts of him I have his tail and part of his mane hanging up on my wall like a whole shrine in my room for him along with a bunch of horseshoes <laughs> um, but I I didn't have enough time to go and grab the dirt from where he was buried it was raining and I just I needed to to get Abigail to her new place and I gave the jar to a friend of mine and I had asked her I said hey when you get the opportunity could you grab some dirt for me? And she said, sure, absolutely no problem. And so a month went by, a little bit longer than a month went by. I totally forgot about the jar. I'd seen her a couple of times and she hadn't brought it. I hadn't thought of it. And April 1st rolled around. This time of year sucks because I go through his birthday and then he passed on May 7th. So this is just kind of like a heartache central this time of year. April, April 1st rolls around. I'm walking through the barn. I go to see Abigail and like a huge wave of sadness comes over me because I, I didn't have the opportunity because I'm no longer at that, that barn. I didn't have the opportunity to go visit him, put Twizzlers on his rock and, and wish him a happy birthday. And not like that really should matter because it's, it's just where he is physically, not where he is spiritually because he's always with me. Uh, he's literally, he's always, he's got my back. He's always with me. But I still just, I felt sad because this was the first year that I wouldn't be able to, to visit him. And I had gone to the barn and then I was going to actually meet up with my friend who, who had that jar, didn't think anything about it. Um, she was going to come up that day to, to do some stuff with me and, and Abigail. And I was sitting in the car, I posted something on Instagram, just, you know, wishing him a happy birthday and everything. And I got out of the car and she had pulled up. And when she pulled up, the first thing she did was hand me this jar. And it took everything in me to not start like sobbing hysterically because this was like it's what I needed <laughs> talk about perfect timing right I don't think you could make that up or plan it and she didn't know that that day was his birthday sorry like I said this time of year is hard but anyway you couldn't have planned that I couldn't have planned that that was all him. <laughs> that was all him. So yeah, my dead horse uh, talks to me from the other side and it's cool. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. He's forever and always a part of my life. And I'm so happy that he makes that very clear. And I'm very thankful that I'm so open to stuff like that happening. Alright friend, well thank you very very much for watching this video. This was an important one for me and something that I've wanted to talk about for a while too. I don't really have a an outro to go with this one. My brain's kind of like bleh with emotions right now. So just promise me you'll keep singing. <laughs> okay friend.